I rise today to speak on the Public Health and Wellbeing Amendment Quarantine Fees Bill 2020. First of all, I think that we should really recognise the amazing work that all of our communities right across Victoria have done to keep the rest of ourselves safe during this global pandemic. It is a phrase that gets turned out a lot, but these really are unprecedented times. The last time Victoria was in a pandemic, life was very different. The economic challenges that we as a state have experienced, along with the rest of Australia and the world, is new, and there's been no rule book or instruction manual to follow. Right from get-go, the Andrews Labor government has worked hard to make sure that Victorians are safe, but also that our economy is in a position to grow and recover. That doesn't mean it hasn't been hard. It's been very hard for many of our constituents, as well as ourselves. The normality that many of us now know has shown how flexible and resilient Victorians really are and can be. Most of us now wear face masks without a second thought. People are able to do their jobs from the comfort of their home and the resilience to be able to work from home and manage family expectations from their homes really is an amazing effort and an achievement that Victorians really should be proud of. And through all of this hard work, Victoria has now come through and, and we're seeing some amazing results. 39 days with triple donuts. Now many on the opposite side said that our plan was unachievable. Airy fairy stuff that we wouldn't be able to get to this by Christmas. It wouldn't be able to get to five cases in the community by Christmas. Well, we've now just seen the ability now to have up to 30 people in our homes and the lifting of many restrictions. Victoria really is tracking along in a relative freedom as we see second waves hit Europe, America and Asia. With these second waves, it really is important that we have a successful hotel quarantine system in place. In, partic in particular, when we see what is happening again in America, Europe and Asia. Back when the state had to deal with the coronavirus early, there was no instruction manual, as I said earlier, and it was the Andrews Labor government and other state government leaders who were really pushing for a comprehensive national approach to hotel quarantine. We are well aware of the cases that managed to leave hotel quarantine, and if it wasn't for this brilliant response from the Andrews Labor government to get back in control of coronavirus, numbers would, would have been facing a very unhappy Christmas. Unfortunately, we are also well aware of some of the disgusting comments made by the federal government members, shockingly many of them from Victoria. When Victorians were working so hard to keep current, current virus in control, sipping beers in Sydney whilst their constituents were working hard to keep their fellow Victorians safe. I think their response was really disappointing and it's very noticeable that now in New South Wales, South Australia have had other cases that have been related to hotel quarantine, they have now naturally been silent. This government hasn't worried about cheap political point scoring. It's been focused on getting on and responding to this crisis. This pandemic is not over yet and we must continue to rise to the challenge of fighting this virus. We know there are many Victorians still overseas and they want to come home and we totally understand that. And it's the Andrews Labor government who wants to do just that and that's bring them home. But of course, it needs to be in a COVID safe way that protects them and the rest of our community. The hotel quarantine program and the single entity set up to run it are ready. It's a stronger quarantine program with strengthened leadership. Oversight and training, embedded public health and enforcement expertise and clear obligations for both staff and residents to keep them and the community safe. There are clear lines of responsibility and accountability and we have hundreds of police, ADF, health workers and other staff ready to accommodate return travellers. It will be led by Corrections Commissioner Emma Cassar who has been appointed as Commissioner of CQV and will report directly to the Minister for Police and Emergency Services. Health enforcement and operational expertise are embedded in the executive structure of CQV and Victoria Police will have a highly visible and significant presence across the program. Carrying out supervision, enforcement and compliance duties at all locations. They will be supported by the Australian Defence Force personnel and highly trained resident support officers. 
Additional infection controls have been introduced, including the daily testing of staff and voluntary regular testing of their family and household members. A centralised contact tracing team, proactive contact mapping for all staff, and a ban on secondary face-to-face -face employment for all staff and strengthened PPE protocols. Frontline staff will work in bubbles to ensure they are only, only have contact with a limited number of other staff during their shift, allowing for the bubble to be taken offline with minimal impact if one staff member becomes unwell. We've done the work to make sure we have the best possible quarantine program. We know we can't eliminate risk entirely, but we have established infection prevention controls that have been tested and are ready. The first travellers began arriving yesterday and are already in quarantine. More are arriving today. This bill provides for the establishment of a free fee structure for return travellers. It is consistent with the National Cabinet decision earlier this year and with schemes already operating around the country. In March 2020, National Cabinet agreed that states and territories would need to determine cost contributions required from travellers entering mandatory quarantine. Contribution fees are already charged in New South Wales, Queensland, the Northern Territory, South Australia and Western Australia. As announced by the Premier last week and in line with the National Cabinet commitment, overseas travellers arriving in Melbourne will be asked to contribute to the cost of their mandatory quarantine through a contribution fee. Victoria's fees will be set at $3,000 Australian dollars per adult and $1,000 Australian dollars for each additional adult in a room and $500 for children aged between 3 and 18 years of age. There will be no charge for children under 3. These costs are the same as those in New South Wales and South Australia and comparable to the remaining jurisdiction fees. Children under 18 years travelling alone will be charged a co-payment of $500 and a parent or guardian joining their child in quarantine will not be charged a fee. These costs are the same as in New South Wales and again in South Australia and comparable again to the other jurisdiction fees. For example, a group or a family of three adults will be charged a fee of $5,000. A group or family of two adults and three children between three and 18 years would be charged a fee of $5,500. A group or family of one adult and one child under three years will be charged a fee of $3,000. The government is still funding most of the cost of accommodation, security, transport and logistics as well as essential items and services such as meals and, meals and medical care. Individuals and families experiencing financial or other hardship can apply for fee reduction or waiver. Payment plans will also be available to all residents. And in other jurisdictions, fee waivers are ver variously available based on significant financial hardship, exceptional circumstances or vulnerability and waivers in Victoria's fee scheme will be broadly in line with those grounds to ensure consistency between the schemes. I would like to take a moment to thank and congratulate the many healthcare workers who have given so, so selflessly and, con and continue to do so to this day. And they're the paramedics, the nurses, the doctors, the cleaners, the orderlies, the catering staff, the administration staff, all healthcare workers deserve our praise, as do all frontline workers and every other worker that has kept the system of work, the productivity going around this state where they possibly can under trying circumstances. I want to thank my constituents in Melton, Melton uh, for beating this virus. We got to a stage in Melton where we had in excess of 500 infection cases per day and they worked damn hard uh, to get it down to uh, double donuts uh, in Melton, as did the rest of the state. And I just want to congratulate them um, for sticking at that hard task of, of getting it down to double zero. I don't know of anyone that wants to have a third wave, and I think that's something that we can all agree on in this house, and that is no one wants a third wave. Um, this has been a terrible experience. Uh, thank God it's been 100 years apart since the last pandemic. I commend this bill to the House and I wish it a speedy passage.